Okay, this next video I'm going to uh, do some comments and criticism of this interview of Jordan Belfort uh, on the Today Show here in Australia, Nine Network. And uh, yeah, as you know, as you may know, uh, Jordan Belfort was uh, the main character in the movie Wolf of Wall Street with Leonardo DiCaprio, one of my favourite movies of all time. I absolutely love it. Watched it about five times already. Um, but I don't think he got a, f a fair go, as we'd say in Australia, in this interview. And uh, let's just watch it because he just gets savage from the very beginning. Here we go. He's the billionaire businessman turned criminal, so ruthless it earned him the nickname the Wolf of Wall Street. Okay, so there we go. A billionaire businessman turned criminal. So uh, you can sort of see where the direction this interview is going. And uh, it doesn't get any better. So, you know, they do the usual uh, Leonardo DiCaprio stuff there. And then they uh, go on about uh, how he's been in jail. ...to fraud and spending 22 months in prison. Since then, of course, Jordan Belfort has rebuilt his life as a writer and a motivational speaker, and he joins us now from Los Angeles. Good morning to you, Jordan. Uh, you've been to jail, you've done your time. Now that you're out, what are you doing to try and redeem yourself? <laughs> I, think, I think Jordan's figured out, uh-oh, here we go. Here we go. I, I think I already have, but um, I've been out for a very long time now, and for the last uh, 10 years, I've really helped people all over the world become very successful, uh, taught them entrepreneurship, um, how to close sales, how to influence, how to market themselves. So I think I'm kind of, you know, past the point where you make it seem like I just walked out of jail yesterday after doing this 30 years ago. It's a little bit dated in your kind of perspective here. Boom! There we go. There's a mic drop moment there. <laughs> you, you tell him, Jordan, you know, he's got a right to defend himself. You know, I, I might not think too highly of him as a uh, as a person and what he did to investors and so forth, but he's, you know, you got to give the guy a second chance. He's done his time, done the crime, did the time. <laughs> but I mean, you previously spoke about your biggest regret on, um, on 60 Minutes, our 60 Minutes program. Um, I think we've got that uh -huh. clip here. We're just going to yeah. play it. My greatest regret for sure is losing people money. Absolutely. And, you know, my goal one day would be to pay back all the money. Can I? I hope so. No guarantees. So the question being, of course, have you paid that money back? I think I have. I mean, I don't think there's anyone left that's owed money. I think there's still a judgment left, but not for people who lost money. It's a distinction. Those who lost money, which is individuals, and just a judgment for a fine. So at this point, there, I don't think there's any investors left who haven't been paid because no one's asking for money. There's money sitting there for many, many years uncollected. So I assume so. I don't really know. I don't have access to the names, but no one's collecting the money that's sitting in a pool. So Yeah, yes, yeah, so that clears it up. But uh, how do I stop these... Uh so-called journalists, so we're going to try a different angle. So you're now a motivational speaker. You said you're teaching go. people how to make money, how to close deals. The way you did that in the past was ripping people off. So is it, what, are you, what are you teaching people now? You're, you're not teaching... <laughs> so, ripping people off, that's uh, it's a nice uh, colourful language there, isn't it? So she's going to ask, oh, hey, uh, you know, what, are you, what are you doing now? What's, what's changed, eh? Hey? Than that, right? <laughs> wow, this is some friendly interview. <laughs> if you really thought that, wow, that's pretty sad. So I think everyone oh, around the world, on. except I mean, except this news program knows that's not what I do. I empower people. I teach ethical persuasion, ethical oh, sales, yeah. ethical marketing, and I've proved that again and again for many, many years. So I don't even know what you're talking about. Well, come on, you band you around the word ethical. I mean, at the end of the day, you're a thief. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god <laughs> well why i just uh, well i know what they're on about they're just trying to bring this guy down he's an alpha male and uh he's feminist hey, that's just like the enemy the alpha male is like a that's like a red uh red piece of cloth to the bull isn't it you know they, they just want to bring this guy down uh, really you yeah, went you to jail for it. so you know they say people with glass houses shouldn't throw so you call me a thief I'm a thief right now. Yes, you are a thief. You went to jail oh, okay. for it. You defrauded victims of $220 million that we know of. What else are you? I, I realize. And he just said that he paid all of them back. So the, funds, the fund was there. So, you know, 
if these if these guys if you hadn't paid it back, well, why haven't they done their job and 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 researched the guy? I don't know if it's all the money's been paid back, but these are the journalists. I don't call myself a journalist. I'm a commentator. Uh, I'm not a journalist at all. You know, I just commentate on videos that, that come up on the news. But um, sometimes I'll do some research on things. But um, as far as I know, I'll take his word for it. They've all been paid back. The ones that uh, that uh, wanted to take the money back. So <laughs> here we go. I really feel sorry for you. I really do. Because, I mean, honestly, you know, none of your viewers feel like this. It's really sad that you're saying this. But, hey, you know, say what you want to say. Why are you surprised by these questions? Because no one other than people like you, journalists trying to get little clicks on your website, would ever think this way. It was 30 years ago. I've certainly uh, redeemed myself a million times over in many, almost everyone else's eyes but people like you. So I just find it shocking and sad. Said for you, not for me. My life is wonderful. Okay, well, what's the difference then between what you were doing then and, and what you're teaching people to do now? Where you, you say it's, it's ethical persuasion, but what makes it ethical? Well, this persuasion, like anything else, it's like a powerful weapon. It can be used for good or evil. If you're persuading people to do things they should be doing, buying things they should be buying, that's really good. If you're using the power of persuasion to get people to buy things they shouldn't be buying, and just to make money, that's bad. I think. I think that's a good point. That's a good point. You know, he. he I think he hit the nail right in the head there. If um, if you're getting people to, because a lot of people just you know, I uh, might think about it next week. Cause it's really high pressure salesmanship, I guess he's selling. But um, I'm not a real big fan of it. But sometimes it can be useful. But um, as he said. Uh, if they're getting people to buy things that they shouldn't be buying, like uh, junk stocks, how he made his money the first time around, uh, then, you know, then that's unethical. Pretty obvious, and most people know that. Do, do you? you? Do you think the Wolf of Wall Street movie helped you? Of course. I think in some ways it, it certainly raised the awareness of my brand. And there's, you know, some things that certainly helped me, you know, other things that detracted me, made me have to sort of clarify things. But all in all, it's definitely a positive experience. People love the movie. And I think people are smart enough when they watch the movie, they understand there's great things I did and there's bad things I did. And most people know the difference. What are the great things you did? The great thing is pulling myself with my bootstraps, being an entrepreneur, building a company, helping other people become successful. That was all great. At the Listen, expense of your victims excuse, excuse who me, lost 98 everything, percent, Jordan. Ninety-eight percent. None of my victims lost everything. I called very wealthy people. That doesn't make it right, but don't let's 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 call it as what it was. I wasn't calling moms and pops who were very wealthy people, so no one lost everything. So what I'm they not could saying that makes it right. I'm not saying money, that makes so it right. Okay? I'm not saying that makes it right, but don't sit there and just lie on TV to your viewers. I don't think anyone here is lying, Jordan. But you are lying right now. You're <laughs> completely making a fabricating a story that's just not grounded in reality. It's just not. Right. I think you might be forgetting you did jail time for this, uh, Jordan. No, no, I, I remember I did jail time. I just think you have no idea what you're talking about. You're clueless. <laughs> oh, nice. <laughs> totally clueless. Well, look, I, um, I, I, I hope you have a great time when you're in Australia. You too, thank you. I'm sure I will. I love Austra <laughs> Australians are wonderful. You personally are clueless, though. Okay, oh well, nice God. to have your company this morning. This thank has been you. very enjoyable. It was a enjoyable. pleasure. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. Thanks, Bye. Jordan. <laughs> well, there we go. Um, <laughs> the guy, you know, love him or hate him, I, I sort of sit on the fence, you know. He's entertaining. I'll put it that way. He's entertaining. And I love him for that. But, uh... Would I go to his seminars? Probably not. Probably not. I don't want to be. I'm going to be taught any, anything that. Uh, oh, I'm not a salesman. Put it that way. Yeah. You know? So it really doesn't interest me. His techniques on how to garner sales and his little secrets or whatever he's got. But um, for entertainment value, yeah, sure. I'd, I'd love to. I'd love to go to his seminars and if he just talks about uh, his life and little stories and things he got up to because he's got a very interesting life. But um, all right, what do you think, guys? Do you think uh, Jordan got savaged, savaged too much by these uh, so-called journalists? I'm not even going to mention their names. And uh, not worth my breath, because I think that was just a shocking interview. It was just, uh, as you said, it was just for clicks. But um, there we go. Whoop. Okay. Went past 10 minutes, do I? That doesn't look like it. But um, I don't know. I just... 
I think just just be fair. There's another interview that um, Natalie uh, Natalie Barr did with uh, Mike Tyson, which was absolutely cringeworthy. It was just so cringeworthy. And another sort of feminist interview I might put up because yeah, you know, these people have got to get called out if they if they've been very unprofessional in the way they do interviews of these uh, celebrities and so forth. Anyway, I hope you enjoyed that one. I enjoyed it. <laughs> Gave me a bit of a laugh. Hope you did too. I'll see you next time. Don't forget to like, subscribe and share. Cheers.